Hello and good morning listeners welcome back to Almus Market Mornings your daily dose of global financial updates I'm your host Swaraj Raj Gopal and we have got you covered on everything from currency shifts to pivotal central bank decisions and important speeches plus you'll gain expert analysis on macroeconomic data that's shaping the market narrative right now join us for this episode and navigate the markets with confidence Markets have been trading on the weaker end against the dollar in a rangy fashion ahead of key events this week like the Federal Reserve meeting. But focus is on the Chinese yuan. Now the central bank set the yuan midpoint at 7.1135, which is the weakest level of setting since January 2019. Morning JK, do you see any risks uh, emerging from the yuan especially for other Asian currencies? What's your thought? Uh good morning uh, Swaraj. Uh, yes, uh the onshore yuan uh, broke a 7.25 level which had been holding for a long time uh, broken and uh, staying around uh, 7.2530 it hasn't uh, had a further up move uh, since then uh, but yes it's a, uh, technically it is seen as an important development but in a broader picture actually we are seeing some tremors in the you know currency market uh particularly since the friday uh, jobs report uh, from us uh, dollar overall strengthened euro fell more than 1% and then we had the weekend election for euro parliament where the right wing uh, got an upper hand and uh, immediately after that uh, the french president has called for a, a snap election for france that will be held this month itself so uh, euro weekend further to 1.0730 uh, uh, although slightly recovered since then uh, you know for europe uh, even the higher gas prices also might start again to be that is one currency and then of course the chinese yuan breaking 7.25 in the onshore it's impacting the other uh, asian currencies as well i am seeing the indonesian rupiah at a new four year low uh, you know closer to 16300 uh so that's again uh, telling uh, impact of the yuan move as well as uh, the large outflow from foreign investors from indonesia in the last few months that has been seen after us inflation has uh, steady uh, has been on the stickier side and the us interest rates have stayed uh, higher for longer on the you know uh, on the other end of the spectrum we had the mexican peso another em currency which has weakened more than 10% since, since the election Uh, of the new uh, chief for the uh, you know uh, country uh, where uh, you know people fear that a huge amount of trans- constitutional reforms may be on the way so uh, it's a kind of uh, you know volatility that has erupted after the elections in various countries of course we have more elections coming up july 4th we have the uk election before that the french election of course indian election uh, i would say was one of the most smoothest affairs Uh, uh although the results uh, were uh, not as widely expected as before in the markets have been quite okay uh, but yes these other currencies are showing some uh, vulnerability uh, due to politics and also mainly due to politics of course and also the strength of the us economy once again reflected in the jobs report uh, uh, on friday yes we have a, a week of uh, you know important events very important events in fact uh, the us uh, Uh, federal reserve meets tomorrow and uh, not only uh, you know uh, the rate announcement which of course is going to remain unchanged there will also be the summary of economic projections which every alternate uh, fed come meeting comes out with and the most important aspect will be what the dot plot will tell uh, in december and april we had uh, you know the dot plot indicating three rate cuts but this time definitely it's not going to be three rate cuts whether it will be two or one may be decided by tomorrow's uh, cpa data which comes uh, a few hours before the fed meeting if the cpa moderates maybe the members stick on to two and then we'll have to see how many actually prefer two and how many prefer one so that's very you know a kind of binary event and that could actually uh, be uh, directional for the markets or the risk sentiment as well and then it will be followed on friday by the bank of japan meeting again it's important because there's a wide expectation that bank of japan japan may announce a reduction in their uh, bond purchase uh, quantum 
uh, from 4.5 billion uh, dollar equivalent to somewhere somewhat lesser amount. Uh, so a change in the Bank of Japan monetary policy, is something that is envisaged not only because of uh, you know uh, the huge uh, amount of uh, uh, holding that the central bank is having, that also because the yen's weakness that has not really been addressed due to intervention and in monetary policies, uh, of course, uh, one of the courses they may take in the coming months uh, to address uh, the yen. Uh, so overall, we are uh, seeing a very uh, uncertain uh, global currency markets. Uh, what's likely to, I think one of these, this week will uh, actually may be setting more direction uh, for the currencies. Of course, the rupee, uh, uh, thanks to central banks, uh, uh, constant action on both sides. Uh, it, it has been, uh, I, I would say, split up pregna. Uh, in the currency market being in a very, very narrow range of 30, 50, no uh, attempts even by the market or even the central bank to allow uh, a movement beyond uh, these ranges. Uh, we'll see if uh, there is uh, more volatility in the currency dollar uh, overall, whether central bank deems it fit uh, to let the rupee also move uh, in line or not. That is something that we'll come and uh, observe in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And uh, of course, the highlight would be the onshore yuan, which uh, saw a break of 7.25 levels, which is very significant. Uh, there is a broad dollar weakness, uh, dollar strength, uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, which is prevailing in the market due to the political turmoil which is happening. Um, especially if we look at the European region, there is some sort of shift which is happening in the political uh, landscape over there. Even Mexican peso, for example, it weakened 10% post its election results because there are fears of big uh, constitutional reforms. And of course, uh, coming up, uh, we have got a lot of elections like from France, UK and US later in the year. So, so a lot of action in the currency market, dollar remains strong. Uh, and this week, the focus will be on the Fed meeting and the Bank of Japan meeting. Uh, so do tune in as we discuss all of these. So that's it from us today. Thank you so much for listening.